Hello there, kia ora. It's US election day. Well, you know, sort of, time zones. And I know you've got burning questions about the election. And I know that it's the kind of burning that you should probably go and see a doctor about. They give you pills these days. There's no more like injections into the, you know what, I'm just going to leave that to your imagination. And look at these burning questions. Like how on earth is it so close? How can a convicted felon run for president? Why are so many alt-right disinformation grifters in this country so keen to see Trump win? Or so invested in this election? How on earth is it so damned close? And of course, who's going to win? The short answer is... Mm -hmm. The US election is an incredibly convoluted system full of odd quirks, like voting on a Tuesday, which was put in place back when everyone traveled by horse and it could take days to get to a polling place. And Tuesdays were the quietest day of the week. I mean, this was before Netflix and there was nothing on TV except for reruns of Seinfeld and Friends. And not every American citizen can vote for president. Some people with mental disabilities are disqualified and each state has their own laws about felons voting, and citizens of a US protectorate like Puerto Rico or Guam, they can't vote for president. And even then, a heap of the votes don't actually really count, because the US election is the last in the world to use the electoral college system, where some electors vote based on the outcome of the vote in their state. And almost all states have a winner-takes-all rule. So a Democrat voting in Utah or a Republican voting in the District of Columbia have never seen their candidates win the presidential race, which means candidates tend to focus on swing states to get the 270 electoral college votes that they need to win. And the big one to watch is usually Pennsylvania. Of all the swing states, this one's actually gone with the eventual winner 10 out of the last 12 elections. And chances are really high that for all of the effort that goes into having, you know, generic looking people in suits who look far more dejected and exhausted as the night goes on, standing next to big interactive maps, trying to divine an outcome with every little update, there actually won't be a clear winner on the night. And we've already seen state court cases where one party tries to disqualify votes over tiny procedural issues, like if a vote is in enough envelopes, which actually happened in Pennsylvania this week. Oh, speaking of court cases, there's going to be a ton of those, and They've actually already started. The Republicans on the US Supreme Court have allowed Virginia to purge 1,600 voters from the roll. In Michigan, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania, Republicans have lost legal challenges to stop spouses of uniformed and overseas Americans from voting. In Nevada, the court affirmed that ballots with a postmark within three days of the election have to be counted, despite Republicans trying to stop them. In Arizona, the Supreme Court there ruled that voters in Pinal County couldn't vote if they went to the wrong precinct. In Mississippi, Republicans have been fighting to have votes received more than five days after the election day, even if it's postmarked for the election day to be disqualified. In fact, most legal challenges have been filed by Republicans and most aim to throw out votes or limit voting ability in areas seen as more Democrat friendly. And unless there's a very, very clear winner, chances are these will go on and on and on, like we saw in 2020. And even then, with a winner, Trump still has never officially accepted the results or admitted he was beaten. Which raises the question again on how on earth is this such a close race? And the answer is still... Mm -hmm. For a start, the entire system is set up as a two-party plurality. And while independents and third-party candidates run, the systems in place and the resources behind the two main parties tend to drown them out. And Americans have, on the whole, accepted that a two-party system is what they have to work with. Don't worry, there will be complaints somewhere that a third party costs one of the big party votes instead of an understanding that a wider range of viewpoints and policies may actually be a good thing for voters. Then there's a ton of different polls. Each has their own problems. A nationwide poll, for example, may indicate popular vote trends, but not electoral college trends. A state-by-state -state vote ignores local congressional district trends, especially in gerrymandered areas. There's margins of error involved in all polls. Polls that focus on one demographic too much, like white men without a college degree over the age of 70. 
And of course, there's tribalism on display. Most people going to a Trump rally will be supporting Trump. Most people going to a Harris rally will be supporting Harris. And online, that creates ideological bubbles, which create a sense of which one is doing better for the person in that bubble that might not necessarily be accurate. And each of them have policies, or at least positions, that speak to their base, and positions and policies which deter people. And there are probably no correlations to be found between states that tend to have the worst education outcomes and the highest rate of evangelicals, and how they tend to vote for Trump, proving American exceptionalism is great on paper, if only they could read. From our perspective, compared to political parties here, the US political parties are right and far right. And only between 8 and 14% of New Zealanders have any inclination to support party lines that are so far right it has whiffs of fascism to it. And Trump's rhetoric was named by the Christchurch terrorist as one of his influences for his actions. It's probably not a surprise that public figures are here that face charges for distributing objectionable material related to that event in Christchurch are out there supporting Trump. That's not to say all Trump supporters think like that. Second man on the moon, Buzz Aldrin, endorsed Trump because of his past record funding space exploration. Hulk Hogan on his ability to bring in cheap, easily terrible clothes from China. From the outside, it seems like it should be clear cut. But from the inside, these issues are often muddied. There's more factors involved than we see on media and TikTok and a mountain of disinformation at play. So the last big question then is who will win? Well, if you look at it on a state-by-state -state polling level, take on board Nebraska and Maine split electoral college vote system, the history of which swing states tend to swing based on which issues are prominently being pushed, the likability of each ticket, the track record of each of them, and the traditional voter turnout trends, then it actually looks like the candidate most favoured to win this race, and it's going to be a tight race. Well, it's going to be... Other things that come at the end of YouTube videos. Those ones there, they're here.